Perfect. Right on the bottom. Hello, everybody. Good, cold, windy Florida, wherever you are, day to you. Today, we're going to the 2002 Chevrolet 6500. Uh, the title says it's a 7500, but this says it's a 65, so we'll call it a 7000. Chevrolet 7000. Uh, I've got a couple parts here uh, that's going to make this thing capable of operating. Ooh, it's cold outside. First and foremost is the serpentine belt. Um, I do have an oil filter and some oil and whatnot, but I want to get that belt changed. I, I ordered the smaller water pump bolt, belt, bolt, belt, words, that is behind the serpentine belt, but it hasn't arrived yet. Um, I do have the cert belt, so I am just going to go ahead and slap that on. But first, uh, let's see if this thing is going to start. It's been, uh, it's been parked here for about two days. Okay, intake heater's not on. It's in park for two days and it's cold outside, so let's see if she's gonna fire up. Yeah. Starting the engine with 177,433 miles on the Caterpillar 3126 diesel. Yeah. Nah -ha -ha! She lives. All right. Oh, there's that alarm thing again, watch this. Yeah. So I didn't realize like I knew this was a big truck when I bought it, but I didn't realize how big of a truck it was until I pulled in and parked next to the other tow trucks and then realized that this truck is a lot taller than those trucks. Uh, so I have concluded that this is actually a very large vehicle. I, it did not occur to me. Uh, anyway, air brakes off. Let's swing this into the shop real quick like. We'll nose it in because I can't put it on a lift. And uh, we're gonna see if, uh, if I can get that belt replaced because eventually that belt is gonna, gonna fly off and shred itself and uh, then I will have no belt and then I'll be needing a tow truck for the tow truck and that would be bad. Oh, by the way, some other folks who notice that I work on my own stuff uh, quite often are giving me quite a bit of re, wondering how I'm doing business when I keep working on my own stuff. And it's really easy, uh, I work 100 hours a week and I feel like I didn't get enough done. And today is uh, is an off day and I am, I'm still here because I'm working on the business, not in the business. Actually, I was working in the business earlier. I finished, uh, I finished a car from earlier this week, a plague of my existence. Right, I think that's good. Engaging air brakes and powering down. All right, let's see what we can do about this belt. It's popping the hood two times. Actually, I left that other side off the other day. And what we do, foot on the bumper, grab handles, give her a tug. There we go. Okay, so our belt. Well, we've seen it before. It's getting it's pretty nasty. It used to be a seven rib belt. Now it's down to three. We need to get that guy out of there right now. All right, so the first thing I need to do is be able to reach in there to get to the belts and the tensioners. Now I can climb up and over and hang out on top of this radiator support. I don't really want to do that because then I got to balance on my knees and then bend way down. So I think I'm going to go in from the bottom. Uh, but I can't go in from the very, very bottom because there's an engine in the way. So I'm going to pull out these inner fenders real quick like. And then... Uh, this one's been broken and screwed in. Yeah, I'm gonna slide these inner fenders off and then we can go in from either side and, uh, and uh, get to that belt tensioner. So what I need to do is unclip this front side here and I believe this whole unit will slide forward. There we go. Got the screws out and this thing should just come. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Now we've got some access here is good okay I've uh, I've gone ahead and pulled out the passenger side fender well as well and I think I found problem number one for why the AC does not want to come on the uh, compressor is not connected there's the connector out of the compressor and uh, there's the rest of it dangling right there so uh, that's step one towards uh, fix the AC uh, anyway we're not doing that right now we're gonna get this nasty grody belt out of here and I can reach the tensioner from right here so let's see, we're gonna go in with a half inch drive 
ratchet. Give it a tug. And this tensioner is kind of junk too. That's pretty crusty. Anyway, we can we can loosen that tensioner. And up top, you can't see, I'm reaching in and I'm gonna pull that. Whoa, there's a flashlight. I'm pulling the alternator, or the belt's off the alternator. If I can. Come on now. That's tight. Tight squeeze. Okay. Yep, look at that, here's some. Oh no, that's, oh there it is, there it is. Look, look here, found some more belt part hanging out over here in the frame. Okay, so the belt's off the compressor, it's off the alternator. Let's go around to the other side, pull it off the crank. Okay, coming around to this side. We'll pull it slack and get it off the crank. It's a huge damp damper. Now we need to maneuver it around the fan. So what I'll do is I'll just stick one, one bit of the belt behind that fan blade. We'll just rotate the fan until it carries the, the belt around back to me. And come here, there she is. One belt. Hang on, I, I changed my mind about that little belt. I, uh, I saw the part number on it and the local part stores can get one. Um, it's not a Caterpillar belt, but they can get one that's gonna fit. So I am gonna go ahead and pull this alternator belt out of here because this thing is, that's pretty nasty. That's uh, it's in really bad shape and and it's loose and it's stretched and I just don't want to ride with it. Now, in order to get that uh, water pump V belt off, I'm gonna have to remove the tensioner uh, for the serpentine belt. So it should just be one bolt, one click, and it's, it'll come out. So I'll get this tensioner off and then I think I can get to the adjustment bolts that go onto the, the tensioner for the V belt. So I do believe one of them is behind this tensioner. I just hope I don't break this tensioner taking it apart. See how that thing's turning? I don't think it's supposed to do that. I mean, if I break it, whatever, I'll, I'll roll this thing outside and order another one, but I really don't want to do that. I'd rather just fix it while I'm here. Now is the end. I think I'm out of threads. Whoa, yeah. I'm out of threads. Whoa, yep, yeah, that's, and the tensioner just flew into pieces. That's broken. Yeah, literally, it just, it just broke. Okay. Well, <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. Holy smokes. Looks like I'm putting a tensioner in this. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, things just falling apart, man. Come on, what is this? Good thing I didn't need to use this truck for something. Or even worse, what if I was out using this truck for something? Yeah, that, that was great. And just like that, $100. Actually, 116 I think is what this thing costs. I hope that's not some foreshadowing to how the future of this truck is going to be. Alright, so you guys really can't see behind this damper and there's not much space, but I'm, I'm in there with the, with a ratchet and a half inch socket and I'm on the bolts for that little tensioner. I think it's just like a, like a rotating cam to type tensioner where I pry on it or something to actually make belt tension. Um, I'm loosening those right now. Once I get that thing loose, I can, I can walk this belt off. Uh, the parts guy just came by. He he gave me a new belt already, so I already got the new one for the for the water pump here. So. Okay, we're on the bolt. It's a tight squeeze in there. Unclick or not? Come on now. Oh, nope. I'm gonna need a longer ratchet. Okay, dokes. I stepped this up to the. 3 8 ratchet. This one's uh, quite a bit longer. Harder to maneuver, but I get more leverage. Oh, got it. Okay. Begin unclicking now. Oh, come on, you. What is this? That's not working. That's what this is. Hmm. 
Maybe I need to get a longer socket. Let me try that. Okay, round three, got a longer, longer socket on it, but it extends past the balancer here, which doesn't give me much space to pull with, but I'm gonna try it out. Okay, yeah, yeah, she turned. All right, that's good, a little bit at a time. Now this should allow that tensioner pulley down here to flop around and move free. You can't see. See a little guy right there above the hose? Is that gonna move? It still isn't moving, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe it's just not loose enough. Oh, there we go, okay. It turns and goes that way. Yep, got it. See that, see how it moves? So what I do is I think I just pry it with a pry bar when I want to set my tension for this belt. I think, okay, so this little belt is now off of the tensioner and the water pump and I have to get it around this ginormous crankshaft pulley. Oh wow, that's, uh, it doesn't fit over the pulley. Watch this. Well, if it doesn't fit over, how do I get the new one? I'm not taking this crank pulley off just for a belt. That's ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah, we'll get it. Am I doing this right? <laughs> the Caterpillar guys, the dudes that know they're all over there going, yeah, you're taking that, uh, that crank pulley off, Ray. It's gonna happen there, buddy. I bet you're right. Yeah, you're right. I'm taking this crank pulley off. This thing needs to go. I can't get that belt off. And I sure won't be able to get the new belt on. Wow. This thing's full of surprises. So I've got a feeling that uh, this truck is going to outclass my tools and I'm going to need to kind of retool in the future. Or get bigger tools. And also probably a lot of specialty tools. And that's the way. I can't reach those uh, those top three because, uh, well, top two, I can't reach this one. There's a fan shroud in the way. So what I'm gonna do is probably bump this over with the key and spin that around some so they're on the bottom. Stand by, I'll be right back. Perfect. Came right around. Good. I bet this is one heavy monstrosity too. Well, first let's unbolt it. I'm gonna leave a couple bolts in. I wanna see if I can't get it loose from the, the crankshaft first. Yeah, that's on there. Man, really? I don't wanna pull this off just for a belt. You guys are killing me hammer let me get my hammer i'm hoping it just knocks loose i don't think it's pressed in there it shouldn't be this thing's never been off guaranteed diesel guys are laughing at me again yeah ray you need a puller to change a water pump belt deal with it is this thing moving no. Okay. Act of desperation going back to plan A. Just maybe. It's worth one more try. 
isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, please just, just slide off of there. If this works, it's gonna be even harder to get the new one on because I know this belt's stretched a lot. But that pulley's not coming off and that's a bad idea. <sighs> Removing belts with hammers. <laughs> that's a first. All right, well, it's off. Hang on, we, this might work out. Plan A maybe, may, it might work, hang on. Put that back on. Okay, let's try it out. Here's the, there's the new one, and I measured it up some, and it's it's a lot smaller than the than the one I just took off, probably due to belt stretch. But that doesn't mean I can't force it, or at least try to force it, or think about forcing it. Maybe a pry bar. Did you ever see someone pry bar a fan belt? Neither have I. Hmm. <laughs> We're gonna I'm gonna make this go on. This is this is going to happen. You Yeah, you're gonna get pry barred. Well, we're gonna get miniature pry barred. If I can just get it past the halfway point we're good and it's almost there i uh, just can't pry on it enough where i start tearing this belt so what i'm going to do is reach up and kind of pull down on this and i'm going to get behind it with this little mini pry bar i'm going to walk it over that pulley as best as i can i figure if i just keep working it i can get it around that pulley enough to where it'll slide Come on, you. This doesn't help that I'm laying on a creeper and my wheels are trying to roll me around. I pry bar fan belts. It's crazy. Let me try that other side. Oh. What if I put a like a ratchet strap on it and just pull it down? <laughs> you think that'll work? I also think a bit of lubricants in order. Got some silicone spray lube here. We'll spray that. Let's see if that doesn't help us. Uh... <sighs> smells weird. Let's see if this doesn't help pull this thing into position. Yeah, friction. Oh, there's flashlight gravity. First one of the day. Maybe second. Yeah, friction is my enemy right now. That lube's really helping. It moved. There's a return of the gravity. Every time I pry this, I knock, knock my light down. This isn't working. Come on, you. It's so close. Ooh, you see that? Come on. The downside to the silicone lube is it's letting the uh, the thing slide back up again. And that's not what we want. Here it comes. Well, it stopped, but it did. Oh, I lost my progress. Hang on. Yeah, I'm about to ratchet strap this thing on. I think I won't. Whew. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Yeah, this is totally gonna work like 100%. And there's the front axle. Watch this. Throw this ratchet strap around it. Put that right there. 
and I think I'll just hook it up right here in a little cross member thing. And then this part of the ratcheting mechanism can go up here on the belt. And now I've got something to pull and maintain some tension for me. This is ridiculous. Is this gonna work? Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is gonna work. Okay, so now I can get back into this belt and pry it down some. I'll tighten the strap again. Pry it on this side if I can, if I can get behind it. I'm not gouging into the belt with the, the business end of this pry bar either. There's a slight gap in the center of the balancer here, and that's what I'm prying against. A little tighter. This thing is so close, man. What if I just start the engine and let it just, uh, <laughs> let the pulley turn? I hammer belts on. Unbelievable. Belts, pry bars, and lubricant. And hammers. Oh, I'm gonna catch some flat for this maneuver, I guarantee you. Ha! Got it! Totally got it. Oh, look at that, and I have the letters facing the right way. Now we're good. That's the best part. I didn't even think about that. I was too engrossed with the task at hand. So anyway, the belt is already on the crank pulley. Let's see, now all I need to do here is I'll reach up and slide it over the water pump and then over our tensioner. Do I need a pry bar for that too? Probably. Pry fingers, there we go. Now, how do I make this tight? Pry bar, that's how I do it. Okay, so I'm, I'm learning here, I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, right about here, I can feel the little square indent to, uh, to fit like a drive tool in order to tension that. Now, I'm assuming that this pulley is supposed to be removed because again, that thing is behind behind the pulley, so you can't get a straight shot on it with a tool. But I do have a wobbly swivel, and I'm wondering if I can't just get it with like a wobble and then put a ratchet on it to get the appropriate amount of leverage. I might be able to do that. Because getting in this thing with a, a pry bar in order to pry on it is either gonna be a two-person job or a, or a not possible job. And this is already looking like it's not possible even like this. I can get the tool on it. But I don't have like any space to... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know guys. I have an idea. Yeah, I've got a super good idea. Check this out. This is... You can't see because it's dark. Fail. This is a 3 8 up to half inch adapter. I think I can slip this thing into the hole on the on the bracket and then get in there with a, uh, a 3 8 ratchet up through this little hole right here and then, then I can put some tension on it. Perhaps that will work. Uh, gravity. So if that doesn't work, I'm, I'm running out of ideas. Might have to air hammer this thing off after all and then all my Carefully crafted efforts will, will have been a waste. That would suck. This is like just short, too short. It's barely too short. Here's what I'll do. I'll put this on, but I won't snap it. I'll just leave it on there kind of dangly. There's enough drive 
enough of it. Ow, that hurt right in the head. Hang on. This is so dangerous. You guys should get hazard pay for working on these things. I hit my noggin. Let's try this again. And I still don't have a straight shot on it because this cross member is in the way. This is, uh, this is gonna work. My stubbornness will, will make this work eventually. I'll figure it out. There is some kind of combination and or tools here that's gonna allow me to do this. Uh-huh, getting closer, getting closer. I made it turn. Yeah, look at that. Now we're getting somewhere. So, I just need to hold this steady and get in there with another ratchet and then tighten one of those bolts. Let's see if I could do this. So that feels pretty tight. I've got the half inch ratchet, half inch drive socket on the quarter inch ratchet here. Let's go a little tighter. I just need to get one of those little bolts tight and then this thing will stay and I can go tighten the other bolt. And I can't get it on that one. Shh, Is there one right there? I think that's the other. Yeah, that's it. Oh no! Hang on, it's still tight. And we lost it. Well, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. We've got, we almost have two tools on the, on the part here. We need both tools in at the same time. All right. Here we go. We're going to win. As my wrench slips off. Come on. Mm, clicks. Okay, that one's, that's tight, that belt's tight. That's good. So now, I need to get that second bolt snugged up. And that's uh, one successful belt. <laughs> $16 belt, $300 in labor to change it. That's the way. I couldn't imagine how bad this would be if this was like inside of an RV. I don't like working on RVs. I don't work on RVs because they're terrible. Not equipped either. I don't have the, the space and the tooling for that kind of stuff. I've worked in an RV shop before once upon a time. Kicks. All right, got it, fan belt on. Um, let's see, now I just need to put uh, the rest of my crankshaft bolts back in, the ones for that uh, big harmonic balancer. I don't want to be riding around with a, a loose balancer. That's how we destroy things epically. We'll just put these back. And of course I lost one. It's around here somewhere. I think I ran it over with the creeper. Oh, I see it. It was under the tire. All right, that's the last one of those guys. Let me hit these with the gun real quick, like. And we can get out of here and wait for that tensioner to show up. Kick. Two kicks. All right, let me bump this over again and we'll get those uh, bottom two bolts. Top two bolts. Top two once they become the bottom two. Are we there yet? Perfect. Right on the bottom. All right, let's get out of here and 
I'll go warm up some. We'll wait for that uh, tensioner to show up. Woo! Rolling, rolling, rolling. Well, guys, I, I made another error in judgment here. Um, I did order that replacement uh, belt tensioner. Like I said, I found one that was local. Uh, however, I just uh, checked with the parts store and the folks that I ordered it from are actually not open today. So, so I can't put that belt on today. Um, so that's kind of going to leave me dead in the water on that. I can still move the truck. I can back it out. It, it can start and run. Uh, since we're this far into it and uh, I didn't get to complete anything, I think I'm going to move on to another side project with this truck. And that is the upgrade for this Huey oil line right here. This line supplies high pressure oil to the fuel injectors inside of the head. And as you can see, this line is starting to, uh, to come apart right here. Now that's not so much the issue. The issue is, is if it comes apart on the inside, it can send uh, fragments of rubber into the injectors and then clog up the injectors and then uh, ruin a set of injectors. So I'm going to install the upgraded uh, solid steel kit in place of this rubber line right here, but that's gonna take a little bit of a uh, a working to get to. I, I think I just really need to remove this boost pipe right here, get that out of the way, and then I can get in from down here and we can get to the fittings on the back of that pump. This thing really shouldn't be too much trouble to remove. It's an 11 millimeter clamp. They're always 11s. I don't, I don't know why. You coming off or are you going to break? Whoa, big flashlight gravity. Holy smokes. Cut. Now, where was I? fix that problem. Am I going to break this clamp? Nah, it's loose. Kind of. Ah, oh, my battery's dead. Noob. Lube on the rust and everything on this has rust. This was an Ohio truck. Seriously? What is problem? Come on, you. You flipping thing, you. Strategy shift. Seriously? Yeah, what's happening here is that things just flopping around too much and the bolt just won't turn. Um, yeah, there's just so much flex in, uh, in all these components right here that uh, it just kind of moves around before the impact can, uh, can actually affect the fastener. This battery's dead too. Man. Hang on, let's try again. See, the problem is, as I said, that this should be easy. And it should have been, and now it's not. It's getting harder. Now we're cooking. That's better. Okay. We're not even close yet. I need to break the bond between this uh, this boot right here and the in the tube. That seems to be happening with uh, relative ease here. Down on the bottom as well. I might silicone lubricate this as well. Okay, that's gonna come off. Yeah, we're gonna get somewhere with this truck today. I don't know where we're gonna get to, but we're gonna get there. Again, I'm just running this around, making sure I don't poke holes in it, just to break that uh, that bond. You can also use a pick, but this tool is working just fine for now. And we just wiggle this guy out. Please come out.
loosey goosey. <clears throat> Seriously. Come on, boost pipe. <clears throat> Woo! Man, you uh you HD guys don't get paid enough. I'll tell you right now. Unless you're making 50 bucks an hour. Some of them are. I understand. There. Now, I'll just slide it out of uh, that side and we're good. Gonna have to take that loose again. More, more looser. -er. More lubrication. Yeah, whatever. I'll deal with that in a minute. Okay, let's move this wiring harness out of the way a little bit. It's, uh, it's bolted to a bracket. Just undo that. We'll pick this thing up and move it aside. You know what else? I'm gonna make sure nothing gets in my intake. There. Okay, now, now we get to the part where I really don't know what I'm doing. I need to figure out how this line right here becomes disconnected from the pump. And I don't know how that works. Uh, I think this is just like a like a rubber. I don't even know what that is. It's like a cover for the disconnect somehow. I don't know. Yeah, I can't really see with all this uh, oil and whatever, or fuel or whatever is covering this. I can't see anything. So let's clean it off. Make it shiny, or at least get all the, the nasty off here, so I can see what I'm working with. What do we got here? Yeah, that's a piece of rubber. I don't see what it does. I know the rubber doesn't hold that on, but what's it doing here? I don't want to break it. Does this line move? Does it rotate? Yeah, it does that. Oh, yeah, that's so full of nasty inside of there. Oh my. Uh, maybe it's just got like an E-clip or something that holds it together. Perhaps that's what the deal is. Let me get this uh, little boot thing out of the way. Yeah, whatever. That's junk now. Goodbye. Don't need you. Okay, yeah, that's some kind of disconnect. And it's so full of nasty, I don't even know if I'll be able to actually disconnect it. There's so much rust in there. Yeah, that's, ooh, that's gonna be a real peach to remove. No way, there ain't no way that's coming out of there. But here's the cool thing is that replacement line comes with a bunch of fittings. So I'm assuming one of these is going to thread into the Huey pump right here. So I'm just going to disconnect that entire fitting. We'll just unthread that whole fitting from the pump. That, uh, that should take care of the issue here. There we go. Yeah, that's going to spill a little bit of oil. This is the, uh, the high pressure oil line. Is this thing coming out? Yeah, it is. Good. Very, very good. The kids in there yelling and stuff. Mom! <laughs> they never stop. All right, there's uh, there's one side of the line removed. Let's uh, let's get this top side disconnected next. 
Okay, we're up here on top of the cylinder head now. And I can get to that fitting right here. Unkick these. Oh, well that's, that's tight. What are, we, what are we doing here? Um, hang on. Unthread these. Oh man, that's on there. All right. Yeah, let me try again. I'm climbing up onto uh, under the top of the radiator. I'm sitting on it. Here. Yeah, see. I fear if I climb in here, I can get some more leverage on uh, on this bolt right here. Uh, wrench, not bolt. Words. I think. Come on. Kind of hurt. Hit my arm, but I got it. It has uh, become loose. You know what? Since that's the uh, the oil feed side right into the head, I need to spray that off and clean uh, all that nasty out of there. I would uh, I'd really hate to cause the very thing that I'm trying to prevent. That would really upset me. Pro tip: Watch this. Bend the straw. Now I can hold the can upright and get some downward spray. There we go. Going back in. But I can just turn the line. Yeah, here we go. It's coming out with ease. Das ist gut. Fill beans. All right, the line's out. Okie dokes, let's go over to the box and we're gonna set up that replacement line with its new fittings. Okay, so what we've got going on here, this is our old line, this is the updated line, and then we've got one adapter, and two adapters to connect this line to the truck. I think this side goes to the Huey pump and this side goes into the cylinder head. Uh, I believe this is the proper orientation. This should be the top. It's supposed to meet this one here and I think when this bolts to the head, this area here tucks in behind the fuel filter and runs next to one of the other fuel lines. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is we need to get this fitting installed. Wait a minute. There's supposed to be an O ring there. Where'd it go? Did it fly out? Yeah, look, this one, that has an O ring. This one does not. What's the deal? They forgot it. Uh, no worries, no worries. I have an O ring kit. Let's see. No, no, maybe this one? Bingo. Okay, crisis averted. Now that I've finished assembling this. Yep, this thing matches up and the O-ring makes the seal. And then the nut right here secures the units together. So what I'll do is I'll attach these first. I'm not gonna screw it down super tight because I still need to screw this into the head. And then the bottom one, How's this work? Okay, I need to screw this into the Huey pump and then lock it down with the jam nut. Uh, but I can't do that until the unit's installed because I have to get this angle proper. Okay, let's head back to the truck and get this thing bolted into the cylinder head. Okay, back up at the truck here. Let's make sure this is gonna fit properly. So we come in like so. This moves up and meets the head, and then the line is going to get tucked in. Hang on. Yeah, it's going to get tucked in right here 
with this other fuel line and it's going to slide behind the filter. That's how this is going to fit. Okay. So what I need to do first is get this fitting screwed into the pump. So we'll move our line over some right there. We'll thread this guy into the pump. I don't need to put any sealant on the threads because uh, it has an O-ring that seals the unit. Is this going to go in? Here we go. It's a little tough to get started. Wow, this is uh, interesting. It's like, it's almost where I need it to be. It needs to point like this way. A little bit more, please. And I can't, I can't do it. Okay, I think it goes like that. That's about, that's about right. Uh, let's go up top a little farther now and get the line connected to the head. Okay, I'm climbing back up. I hope you guys can, can see what's going on in here. So here's our line. I'm gonna pull the, the protective cap off. And we're gonna get this thing threaded into the cylinder head. Here it goes very carefully. Yeah, this is a kind of like a no power tools kind of engine. There we go. Now you can't see because my hand's in the way, but I'm just speeding up this threading process a little bit here. And again, this, I think I already said it twice, but uh, there's an O-ring that seals this into the cylinder head here. Kick. That was actually, a, that was a pre-click. I need my longer wrench. Okay. There, all right, that's tight. Now the, the fitting on the line is loose. That's not tight yet, because we need to attach it uh, down here at the bottom on the pump. And it needs to be able to move around some. Oh, we're leaking. I oh, everything gravity, hang on. We need to change this angle some and point this up a little higher. Right there. You didn't see what I was doing, but, but I did. Okay, all this stuff is aligned and threaded. Let me run this down a little bit further. To start to snug everything up and make sure it all stays in line. See that angle is a little weird. I don't like that. I think it's binding. No worries. We can change our angle of our dangle here. Maybe. Shit in there. I'm gonna 
what I'm gonna do is come up top and draw this top nut in a little bit and just get that thing flush with the with the fitting. This all has to line up perfectly or it'll kink the hose and then uh, it'll break it and make it leak. And if this hose leaks, that's 3,000 PSI of oil pressure spraying out. And that would be bad. We don't wanna do that. I'm not gonna torque that just yet. I am just uh, running it down until it makes the, uh, the line flush with the fitting. Yet still leaving it loose enough where it can move around. Okay, that's good. Let's go back to the bottom. I'll do the same on this bottom guy right here. We'll run it down until it uh, until it's seated, and then I can kind of wiggle this fitting so it all feels like it's uh, nice and settled, and then I'll tighten it down to the pump using the jam nut right here. It's like a compound catch-22 situation. Good, it bottomed out. Let's just give that a wiggle. That's about right. And there's some torque. Now I need to apply a little bit to our jam nut and then a little bit up top at the head. Then we can uh, we can start this thing. Kick. After we start it, maybe I can see where that fuel leak is. Okay, moving up. I just need to, like, uh, I don't know what that was, but it fell. I just need to apply a little bit of a uh, torque to this uh, this last fitting here. And we can restock things the engine. Oh, packages. Now the fan belt's not on it, but the water pump belt is, so it'll be okay to run for a short period of time. Oh. All right, let's get out of here. Okie dokes, I skipped ahead, put the boost pipe back on, uh, all the tools and stuff are out of the way mostly. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, restock things in the engine and uh, check this thing for leaks. Uh, I hope we don't have an oil leak. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a fuel leak though because I know this did not solve my fuel leak problem. But uh, I'll do that next. Restock things in the engine. There's uh, plenty more to come. The uh, thing's not roadworthy yet, but I'm trying to get it there. Uh, I think that's going to be about it for this episode. So, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this heavy duty truck diesel repair video. I enjoyed making it for you. If you didn't do the video, you know the drill. Please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section also down below. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. In the tow truck.